All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we return to our reinforced concrete design. And we're gonna do an example problem associated with the cracking moment and how it can be used and figure out whether or not the beam or the cross section has cracked in tension. So in this problem, we're given that FC prime is 3000 PSI. We have the beam geometry and loading, which I'll draw in a second, and grade 60 steel, although that's not really relevant for this problem. And we wanna determine if the cross section is cracked in tension due to the loading shown. And the geometry of my beam is as follows. And here in this problem, I have a beam. And this beam is a simply supported reinforced concrete T-beam. It's got a uniformly distributed load on it, which we'll say it for now is just the beam weight. And we'll say this weight here is about 0.5 kips per foot. It also has a concentrated load right in the middle of one kip. This beam has a length of 20 feet and 10 foot to mid span. And that's where that one kip load is applied. The cross section is a T-beam, which looks like this. So I've got a reinforced concrete T-beam. It's got a 24 inch wide flange, 12 inch wide web. Total height is 30 inches here and a three inch tall flange. And what I wanna do is determine if this thing is cracked in tension or not based on the loading shown. Now the approach that I'm going to use to solve this. So my approach is gonna first involve calculating the cracking moment of the cross section here. This cracking moment is like a property of the cross section where the concrete and tension cracks. And here I'm gonna calculate the, the cracking moment here using the flexure formula because the concrete cracks in tension when the tensile stress of the concrete reaches this tensile strength. And in this case, this would be equal to this modulus of rupture, which is the tensile strength. Ig is the gross cross section over yt, which is a distance from the neutral axis to the extreme tensile fiber of the concrete. And we're using gross section properties of the cross section because we're looking at the cross section just before, the instant before it reaches its tensile strength. And we can simplify the calculation just by ignoring the steel and assuming everything is concrete. And then after we calculate the cracking moment, we're gonna do a quick little structural analysis, find that maximum moment inside the beam that this external loading is causing. And we're gonna call that the applied moment. And we're gonna check, is this applied moment greater than this cracking moment property of the cross section? And if it's true, then the section is cracked. If it isn't, then it's not cracked. The beam hasn't cracked in tension. All right, so before we get into it, one of the things I like to do when I calculate the cracking moment is to draw the strain profile. And you don't need to do this every time, but you know, as the first example, it's probably a good idea to show you how this cracking moment relates to the strain and the stress profile of the cross section. So here, with the way the loading is, we know that the moment that's applied is gonna cause compression at the top Top and tension at the bottom. And if this is something you're not sure of, you probably want to draw a moment diagram just so that you can confirm that for yourself. And here, the strain profile. Now the strain profile looks something like this. This is normal strain. And in the cracking moment, we're assuming that all the materials still remain linear elastic. This point up here would be my compressive strain, epsilon compression. At the steel centroid, I'm gonna call this value epsilon s, the, cent the steel strain. And at the very bottom here, I'm gonna call that epsilon tension. The cracking moment is associated with the condition or the moment when this tensile strain reaches the tensile strain concrete associated with the modulus of rupture. So this, by Hooke's law would be equal to FR divided by the modulus of elasticity of concrete. And by Hooke's law again, we could draw the stress profile associated with this cross section at the cracking moment. And where I have zero strain, that's where my neutral axis is. And because the cross section we're dealing with here is just, we're treating this as all concrete. The neutral axis is that also at the geometric centroid. And I'm gonna take the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the neutral axis. I'm just gonna call that CNA. And by Hooke's law, because again, all the materials are linear elastic, I can just multiply everything by the modulus of elasticity of concrete and draw a stress profile, which will also be linear. And my top or everything above the neutral axis is in compression. Everything below the neutral axis is in tension. And this cracking moment is the moment associated with the tensile stress in the concrete equal 
to the modulus of rupture of the concrete or the tensile strength of concrete. So it essentially cracks. And if you want to look at this by equilibrium, the cracking moment would technically be here, and this would be MCR. And this is what we would apply this flexure formula for to calculate MCR. This distance yt over here is a distance from the neutral axis to that tensile stress location is y. T. And all three of these are related by the flexure formula, the cracking moment, the, tens the distance to the tensile fiber, and then the tensile stress, and also the cross-section moment of inertia property. So now we're just going to go ahead and apply this cracking moment formula, which is just ACI equation 9-9 if you're using the 318.11 code. But you could have derived this from mechanics materials, so it's no big deal. So two, let's go ahead and calculate this cracking moment. And the hardest part about this is probably coming up with this moment of inertia and the neutral axis location, especially when the cross-section is not symmetrical like this T-beam shape. So here, first and foremost, the modulus of rupture or this tensile strength is equal to 7.5 square root of FC prime, which is equation ACI equation 9-10 for standard normal weight concrete. And to calculate that, you just substitute the ultimate compressive strength. And you just have to remember that all these empirical formulas that's, that are in, or the, anything that involves the square root of FC prime has to be in units of PSI. And this equation outputs a result in units of PSI. And this comes out to 410.8. PSI. And now, you know, the hardest part really is, is calculating these section properties. And so here, if I look at this cross section, the first thing I want to do is calculate the, the centroid. And the centroid really is CNA, or at least the distance to the centroid from the very top would be CNA. And so if I choose a reference, I'm going to choose this top line as my reference. I will break this cross section up into two areas. This will be area one. And then this bottom web portion will be area two, or the stem of the T-beam will be area two. And from in this case, because we choose that top line as the reference, CNA is the neutral axis location. And this is the sum of AI, YI, over the sum of AI, or the total area. And in this case, this would be, this is area one here. The centroid of area one is here, and the distance so area one is, let's see, 24 inches times three inches. The distance from the reference to the centroid of area one is 1.5 inches plus area two, which is 12 inches by 27 inches. And the centroid of area two, which would be this distance right here, would be 13.5 inches. The centroid of area two from the reference is 16.5 inches. And then divided by the total area, and this would tell me that CNA is located 13.77 inches from the top. And now to calculate the gross moment of inertia, I'm gonna use my parallel axis theorem. And here, Again, I'm just going to keep the area one, area two. So here, this calculation, I would have the moment of inertia of area one about itself, which will be 1 12th, the base, which is 24 inches times the height, three inches cubed, plus the area, 24 inches times three inches times the distance from the center of area one to the neutral axis location. And if here, here is the CNA, Okay, here's that neutral axis, then dy1 is the distance from this center to the neutral axis. So this distance right here would represent dy1. And mathematically, that's just 13.77 inches minus 1.5 inches quantity squared. I repeat the same for area two. And when I work this out, I'll get that. The gross moment of inertia of this entire cross section is 32,991 inches to the fourth. And so now that we have all of our components and we know what CNA is, the last part is to d figure out the distance from the neutral axis to the extreme tensile fiber, which, which really has been done for us. You know, if we know that CNA is 13.77 inches, the total height of this is 30. So YT, or the distance to that extreme tensile fiber, is just 30 inches minus 13.77 inches, and this is 16.23 inches. And now I'm just gonna plug and chug into the cracking moment. And you know, I don't mess around with, with positive or negative signs right here. In a way, I'm just calculating the magnitude 
okay? I'm calculating the magnitude. I know the direction of the moment based on my moment diagram or my loading. And so I know that the moment is gonna be causing compression at the top, tension at the bottom. This is the orientation. I just need the magnitude to fin finish this up. And here, if I plug and chug and I calculate here, I will get 835,054.14 pound inch, which if I divide by, you know, if I convert to kips and feet, this becomes 69.59 kip feet. And this is my cracking moment. All right, so now that we have a cracking moment, which is essentially, again, a property of this cross section, we wanna compare it to the maximum internal moment that this loading causes on this cross section and see whether or not this section has or this beam has actually cracked with this loading you know you could do a, a structural analysis or a basic statics problem and it's symmetric and everything and so you could draw the shear moment diagrams because this loading is symmetric my max moment is going to occur at the mid span i can calculate this maximum internal applied moment this is equal to the moment at mid span from the distributed load which is really just WL squared over eight plus PL over four. So the maximum internal applied moment at mid span due to the distributed load is gonna be WL squared over eight. And then I can also add the contribution for the concentrated load at mid span, which is gonna be PL over four. And you can verify this with moment diagrams or equations from, from a bunch of books. And here, if I just plug and chug, and this moment is going to be equal to 30 kip feet. And now I gotta make a decision here. Has my beam cracked? And because M applied is less than the cracking moment, therefore my beam has not cracked. All right, hope you enjoyed that reinforced concrete cracking moment example. Take it easy, start to feel.